Good morning. I've been doing a little work to my truck this morning. C10, 81. Nice truck, not a big deal, but just put a 700R4 in it. Got rid of the old TH350 that had parts in the pan from burnouts, probably. But was going to show you guys how I'm going to wire up my torque converter on it. Been driving a couple weeks without it. Not a big deal. Just runs a little hot. Hasn't hurt anything, but it's supposed to be there. I want to get it right. So let me show you the truck. This is my 81 Chevrolet C10. Short bed, step side. Some people love the step side, some hate them. I like all the trucks, but I'm really liking this one. Um, it's shinier than normal. Sprayed it down with SC1. Well, half of it. If you look over here, it's still dull and nasty. But, like I said, just took out the TH350, put a 700R4 in it. Um, bolted right up like it's supposed to. I did have to get my drive shaft shortened because I have a short shaft. You can see it over there. Short shaft, TH350, put the 700R4 in. It's three inches longer. Dry shaft needed to be three inches shorter. So, let me get this truck jacked up and secured and we'll crawl under it and I'll show you what I have. So we got the truck up on my secure jack stands and I was going to show you what I'm looking at, what I got. Um, pulled this transmission out of the junkyard, came out of a 89 or 90 van, I think, Astro van. But um, did not get the plug, the uh, electrical plug that goes on the side of the casing. So eBay, Amazon, a uh, 10 $12 plug. But this is what I'll need to lock up my uh, torque converter when I get in fourth gear. Three wire plug, only need two. Purple's gonna be hot, blue is gonna be, nope, sorry, purple hot. Tan is gonna be my ground if it needs a ground. The way I'm gonna find that out is plug this in, run 12 volts to this purple wire, and see if I hear a click. If I do not hear a click, I'll ground the tan wire, and hopefully I'll hear the solenoid pull in in the transmission. So let's get that together and see what happens. So after trying to plug this into the transmission, I figured out I had a problem. This pin would not allow it to plug in for some reason, so it had to be modified. I took it out removed the purple wire because that was the one that was holding me up it was obvious when you try to push it in you could feel it it did not want to go on that part so pull the pin uh, cut it off and go on to put the pin back in uh, really cool tool I think it actually came off wish it was like crazy cheap like everything on wish is took two months to get it but these little pin pullers uh, if you get these they uh, go beside the pin and will allow you to pull it right out. It's so easy and so worth the 10 bucks and two months it took to get it. But I'm gonna put this back together and try it again. Hopefully it'll go in this time and the pin that's going to stick out of here will fall where it needs to fall inside the connection. So we're gonna give it a try and see what happens. So the plug did fit in after I cut that little um, piece off. It's going to show you a couple extra parts I'm going to be using for this. Um, first, toggle switch. Old used toggle switch apparently, but it's what I got in the box. Um, I'm going to mount this on the dash somewhere, and what I'll do is I'll come from a fusible source. I will go one side of this out the other, and from there I'll go to this brake light switch. So this is a brake light switch for a later model uh, Chevrolet C10 or Blazer and what it is is for cruise control so two of these are normally open two of these are normally closed and what that will do is the normally open ones will go to the brake lights so that when this is depressed it closes makes your brake lights come on the other two are for cruise control so it's supposed to break cruise control when you hit your brakes I'm going to use it to break the torque, conver torque converter lockup and it will go in one side, out the other, normally closed. You push your brakes, it opens it, that will unlock the torque converter. So, the reason I'm putting the toggle switch in is so if I'm cruising through town, I can turn it off, 
and it won't lock the torque converter when it shifts into fourth running 35 40 miles an hour and lug the engine I do not have a stall converter in this or I have a stall converter but I don't have a high stall converter in this truck like I probably should I think this one's a factory one rated at around 1800 rpm so I'm going to put this in to keep it from lugging when it's going at low speeds but I want to put this first before the brake light switch or for the brake switch so that if I have any problems this will kill all power from here out it doesn't matter which order these go in but my idea is if there's ever a problem I can just throw this switch and everything from this switch beyond it will be dead so we're gonna try this out hopefully it'll work and we'll move on one thing I didn't mention was I need to figure out which of these two are normally open normally closed so that I know which ones to wire to the brake lights and which ones to wire to the torque converter so easy enough you see my alligator clips it just goes back to my meter so right now I would assume that it's normally open this should close it it does so that'll be the brake light switch so if I hook these two alligator clips to these it should beep all the time until I push the switch in so let's try that we got a beep and close the switch boop that will unlock the torque converter. So here are the two switches side by side. This is the one I just pulled out. Um, obviously it's a little configured different but luckily enough the plug is the same distance right there and even the way it connects in will work here but instead of plugging in from the back it'll just plug in from the top so it actually works out very well I thought I was going to have to cut and uh, crimp some new connections on it looks like it's going to almost bolt right in so yeah that's pretty sweet I love the Chevy stuff for this reason everything works on everything else to a point the parts are inexpensive I've had Fords and Chrysler and holy cow the cost of Chrysler and availability this GM stuff is amazing and it all works very well so yeah, I'm going to get this in and then I'll show you the wiring I'm going to do for the tor torque converter on the back. So I found the spot on the dash that I wanted to mount my switch, but just a little tip for drilling the hole for these. If you don't know what size you need, take the nut off and see which drill bit it fits around. And the last one that it fits you want a size bigger than that. So it fits that one, does not fit this one. So that'll be the size hole out of the drill. And that way the switch will go through, but the nut won't go through and the nut will hold it in place. This switch happens to be a 15, 30 seconds. So I just wanted to show what I got done in the cab here. And I needed a 12 volt power source that was keyed and got lucky and found this plug dangling under the dash. Don't know what it went to, but it is fused off a 15 amp fuse. So I pulled power from that, left me enough on this pigtail in case I ever need to hook it back up. Went over here to a toggle switch that I have under the dash there. And from there, it went to my brake light switch that I was showing you earlier. So to show you how all this works, I have my test light hooked up, turn the key on, you see no power to the test light, toggle switch, I have test light, or I have uh, power, so when I hit the brake, kills power should unlock the torque converter, get back up to speed, shift into four, torque converter will lock back up, and if I'm going around town, don't want it at all, I can turn it off. Okay, so I got the wire pulled up under the truck followed it down to the transmission and the way I followed it was with the speedometer cable because it goes to almost the exact place I need it to be so I'm going to try to show you what I've got down here or how well it's going to work in the dirt laying up under a truck and either my trucks are getting lower or I'm getting bigger I'm not sure which but this is what I have. I followed my speedometer, speedometer cable with red wire. And I did that because I know it's not going to be close to the header. 
Speedometer cable is already routed in a nice way. Just followed it down and came up to the plug. As you can see in there, the blue wire doesn't go to anything. I connect it to the purple wire and then I grounded it here on the heat shield. And I'm not sure if I needed to ground this or not. I owned it out and it was already grounded ohming it, but I don't think it's gonna hurt. I'll find out when I drive the truck. But that kind of wraps this up. Uh, this is how I got from the cab down to the transmission. So the next thing to do is get it off of my sort of jack stands, my car ramps, and drive it up down the road. We'll see what happens. So I just got back from driving the truck around. Everything did great. Uh, ran it on up to about 60 miles an hour. And with the switch off, uh, about 21, 2200 RPM. Same cruising speed, turned the switch on. Went down to 18, 1900, so it lost about 300 RPM, which was great. So this worked out really well. Tried the brake switch at the same speed, cruising 60 with the toggle switch on, 1900 RPM. Tapped the brake, and they would the RPMs would come up. So it did kill the signal like I'd hoped. And everything worked out great with it. I'm really excited and really happy. The only thing I may add is a vacuum switch so that during hard acceleration, it will unlock the torque converter and then when vacuum comes back torque converter will lock back up so i probably will add that it's inexpensive and i think would help the life of the transmission and the drivability of it so really excited really glad it all worked out really easy fun friday job so my next task the next thing in store for this multicolored c10 is in this white box and in this white box i have if I can get it open, almost a set of gauges. So I wanted some gauges in this truck since nothing on the dash works. It's just old and none of them work. But everything pre-made is really expensive. So I bought these, hope to pull the instrument cluster out. I think these will fit pretty good in there and I intend to find out anyway. So until next time, Thanks for watching. Y'all be good.